Thanks to a recent lightning storm, the top row of my solar array is no longer putting out any power. The diodes in the junction boxes for the panels were fried from a nearby strike somehow, so we're going to go through and replace those. As we can see, I'll bite my terrible camera angle, sorry about that, we have zero volts coming through the terminals on the panel. We should be seeing somewhere around 40 volts, so zero is definitely bad. We can swap over to the diode testing function and see that the diodes are allowing power to go through the diode on both sides. I believe this means that it failed open? Not 100% sure on the terminology there, I just know how to replace it. With that said, let's go ahead and remove this panel that we're testing from the array and bring it inside. This panel is about 7 feet in the air, so not really fun to remove, but at least it wasn't one of the two center rows. Now, removing the panel isn't actually required for this. You could block off the panel with like a, uh, say a moving blanket or something similar and guarantee that there would be no power going through it and mitigate the risk of shocking yourself. I actually did the far right one in the array outside, but soldering upside down wasn't exactly fun, nor was I all that good at it, so moving them inside to a flat surface was the much easier solution. Once you find a suitably large area to carefully set your panel down, you can get to work on it. And just for reference, these things are 78 by 39 inches in size, so they're pretty big and rather hefty. Now that we're ready to start some work, let's work on removing these bad diodes. My panels have 6 diodes per panel, so that's fun. Removing them isn't all that difficult, don't let me struggling with the first couple of these fool you. I was trying to not block the camera with my hands or knock the tripod over and was struggling because of that. Removing the diodes is fairly simple, but they are attached to large chunks of metal, which work as wonderful heat sinks, so it can make it a little difficult to melt the solder pool that these sit in. Ideally it would have been to use a chisel tip soldering iron instead of my pointed one, however my chisel tip doesn't have a hot spot on the tip or even most of the flat side for that matter, and I haven't bought a new one, so pointed tip it is for this. The easiest way that I found to remove these things was to get the tip of my soldering iron underneath the leg of the diode and applying the hot spot directly to the leg for a few seconds, which would then melt the solder that it sat in, and could then lever up the diode with the soldering iron and the pliers. Now, if you have fancier tools, such as a solder sucker or a good solder wick, you could melt the solder on top and remove it, which is the better way of doing it. I, uh, I just don't have those, so melting and removing was my method here. Before we begin actually installing the new diodes, let's go ahead and prep them for going into the panel. Using one of the old diodes as a guide, we just need to bend the legs for the new diode to approximately the same size and shape, and then trim off the excess length on the legs so they'll fit in the panel. Once they're all prepped for shape and size, do yourself a small favor and pre-tin the diodes to make sure they'll sink into the solder pools that were left on the panel. Just touch your soldering iron to the leg and melt your solder onto it, and it should quickly suck up the solder. Thank you. 
when it comes to reinstalling the diodes, it is extremely important to make sure the silver band on them goes the same way it previously did, as diodes are directional and will have issues if installed backwards. In my case, I need the silver bands facing the right side of the screen here. Go ahead and put your diodes into their respective slots. There are tiny holes on either side of the silver contacts that the legs of the diodes actually slide down into. If you were like me and didn't get your sizing quite right, you can easily bend the diode legs a bit and get them to fit in. With all six of the diodes in and facing the correct direction, go ahead and solder them into place. Place the tip of your soldering iron to the solder pad on the panel to heat it up and feed some new solder in to cover the new diode legs and let them sink into the solder pads for a secure connection. With all six of the diodes replaced, it's time to toss it back into the array. It's a bit of a tight fit for the way that I designed this array, Eventually, I will be rebuilding the whole array to accommodate up to 40 panels and be a far better fit than what we're seeing here. Maybe I'll even do a video on that if you guys want it. Well, I guess we didn't need that clamp anyway. I'll just grab that later. With the panel seated back in and facing the sun, we can do a quick test and verify that it's getting its full voltage again. And just a full disclosure here, this clip was actually recorded like two weeks later because in the original clip, which I'll show later, uh, my hand completely covered the multimeter because, you know, I'm good at camera angles, obviously. With everything fixed up and back in place, go ahead and toss the cover back on and enjoy your solar energy. And that's all for today's video. Hopefully you found it helpful and or informative. Ha, ha, ha.
Really? All right, all right. Good boy. Thank you. As always, if you like the content I'm putting out, make sure to like, comment, share, subscribe, and don't forget to hit the notification bell to stay up to date with all new content as it comes out. A quick shout out to our channel member, Dobby Lapuz, and a thank you for your continued support. That's all for today. Thanks so much for tuning in. Take care.